Oh, good day, everybody, and welcome to the Bible in a Year 2021. This is day 136. That's 136. And we are reading Psalms 3, 4, 12, 13, 28, and 55. And you know how we usually do it with the Psalms. We, uh, we just uh, pick out something that will give us an overall sense of what's going on with that Psalm. Um, psalms are very personal. And uh, yeah, it's uh, Spirit speaks to us in, in these things. And we just want to leave it kind of there uh, between you and the Spirit. But just wanting to touch on um, just a, a little aspect of, of each of these Psalms. And again, um, I, I do apologize for the last few days with the new microphone, not realizing you were getting vibrations from the desk. So I am trying to be aware of that and have minimal contact with my desk. <laughs> So let's get right into this. Then we're going to start with Psalm 3. Um, you know everything that's going on in the way with, the, uh, with David. Um, Absalom has rebelled. Uh, he's lost his eldest son, Amnon, uh, was killed by Absalom. Uh, it's been a long time coming, but Absalom has been um, um, creating this thing uh, a division between him and the king that the king wasn't even aware of. Uh, he's now risen up and rebelled against the king. The king has left Israel, uh, Jerusalem, not because he was unable to defend it, um, but because he does not want to take on his son. He does not want to fight with Absalom. So you can only imagine, um, we can only imagine the kind of stress, the kind of thing that David is is feeling at this moment. And so we can ask ourselves, how, how did David sleep with all of this stuff? Because you know, it doesn't take a lot to disturb your sleep, does it? Um, th unresolved things can, can keep you awake at night. So how does David do this? And in Psalm uh, 3, we see this in, in verses 5 to 6. I lie down, sleep, and wake up because the Lord helps me. I won't be afraid of thousands of people surrounding me on all sides. <laughs> it's as simple as that. David's confidence was not in himself. It wasn't in his warriors. It wasn't, wasn't in his riches. It wasn't in his position. It was in his relationship with the Lord, because the Lord helps me. That's how David slept at night, because the Lord helps me. Um, in, in Psalm 4, 68 here, we, we, we see uh, another example of why David um, does well, why, why he just, he, he prospers in everything. Uh, even in this thing that he's facing right now, uh, David's going to prosper. It says, many people say, we can't find goodness anywhere. The light of your face has left us, Lord. But you have filled my heart with more joy than when their wheat and wine are everywhere. I will, will lie down and fall asleep in peace because you alone, Lord, let me live in safety. Okay, so like David's leaving the city, running away from his son right now. You let me live in safety. Yeah, yeah, they're all saying that they can't find goodness anywhere, but you have filled my heart with more joy and when they're wheat and wine are everywhere. It's, oh man, you look at this, and this is really available? Like this kind of relationship is really available? Come on, David. Wow. Like, wow, people. Is this not our goal? Is this not our longing? In, uh, in Psalm 12, um, we see what David sees. Uh, Help, Lord, because the God, they are all gone. The faithful have completely disappeared from the human race. Everyone tells lies to everyone else. They talk with slick speech and divided hearts. You can hear his pain, can't you? Like he didn't see this coming. He did not see this thing from Absalom. Absalom is honoring him with his mouth. Uh, and, and, and treated David well with respect and honor. 
And so this is what David's seen. He's seen this with his eyes. This is his reality, just like you see the things that you see. You see bills, you see um, difficulties, you see uh, broken relationships, you see all this stuff around you, you see angry people, you see hateful people, you see all kinds of stuff, right? You see it, it's there. We can't pretend it's not. But this is what David hears and knows. But the Lord says, in verses five to six, but the Lord says, because the poor are oppressed, because of the groans of the needy, I'm now standing up. I will provide the help they are gasping for. The Lord's promises are pure, like silver that's been refined in an oven, purified seven times over. This is, I think this is the part that we really struggle with um, if, if, we, if we're willing to be honest. David absolutely trusts the Lord. No doubt, his experience, everything he's been through, he absolutely trusts the Lord. He would rather run away from Jerusalem, or let, let Absalom have that, and wait on the Lord. See what the Lord wants. We look at it as a weak leadership, but what it is is a strong relationship with Yahweh. The Lord's promises are pure. That's, that's, that's David. That's through and through. We struggle with that. We struggle with that. We know what the Lord has said, and yet we don't. We know what the Lord has said, and we think, oh, that doesn't apply to me. We know these things. But there's a difference in, in sitting admiring David, knowing what we should do, and then going off and, 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 and doing like we've always done, compared to looking at the example of David and saying, I want that, and then just determining that you will trust the Lord. I will trust the Lord. If he said it, that's good enough for me, no matter what it looks like. First, or, or uh, Psalm 13. Um, and, and here again, we look at the, the incredible thing about, about David's trust. In verse 1 to 2. How long will you forget me, Lord? Forever? See, David... David's not in La La Land. This is David's facing lots of stuff. And they're like, where are you, Lord? Like, uh, have you forgotten me? Look at the situation I'm in. How long will you hide your face from me? How long will I be left to my own wits? Agony filling my, my heart daily. How long will my enemy keep defeating me? So this is his reality, right? These are his questions. And he's honest with the Lord. He, he has this relationship with the Lord. He has this rapport where, where he, is, he is honest because he, he does this. This is what he does right here in verses 5 to 6. But I have trusted in your faithful love. <laughs> okay, go back a second. How long will my enemy keep defeating me? But I have trusted in your faithful love. My heart will rejoice in your salvation. It's the declaration. I know who you are. I know who you are. And although this is how I'm feeling, this is how I decide to live. There's a difference between feelings and decisions you make. You, you, you can be depressed. You can, you can be in agony. You can feel defeated. You can have all these things. But when you trust the Lord, you're going to act on what he says. And regardless of how you feel, man, you just, you're just going to. My heart will rejoice in your salvation. Yes, I will sing to the Lord because he has been good to me. I'm going to remember the Lord. This is how David encourages himself from the Lord, as we've read uh, in the past. This is how he does it right now. This is my situation. But I, have, I will trust you. I trust your faithful love, you have been good to me. Psalm 28, verse 1. What matters to David? What gives him joy? I cry out to you, Lord. You are my rock. Don't refuse to hear me. If you won't talk to me, I'll be just like 
those going down to the pit. What's the difference? The pre- difference is the presence of the Lord. That's what the difference is. What is the difference between us and everybody else on the face of this planet? The presence of the Lord. His ongoing conversation with us. Look at this in verse uh, 7 to 8. Um, they're not just words to David. The Lord is my strength and my shield. My heart trusts him. I was helped. My heart rejoiced. And I thank him with my song. The Lord is his people's strength. He is a fortress of protection for his anointed one. <sighs> do, you, do, you, do you just feel the encouragement? Do you just feel that? Can you feel the spirit just calling you to something deeper, something greater? It, it's, not, it's not found in simply reading the words of David. It's only found in actually experiencing that intimacy with Yahweh, intimacy with our Father, intimacy with Jesus, intimacy with the Holy Spirit. That's the only way it's found. When you're called into that place, then he is your rock. He is your fortress. He is your shield. But understand that the faith is, is the most amazing, the most amazing, the most telling, the most brilliant in the darkness. I say to myself, Psalm 55, 6 to 8, I say to myself, I wish I had wings like a dove. I, I'd fly away and rest. I, I'd, I'd run so far away. I'd live in the desert. I, I'd hurry to my hideout far from the rushing wind and storm. <laughs> David is not looking for trouble. David tries to avoid trouble. David does not like trouble. If he could, he'd run away. He'd fly away. He'd get out of that situation if he could. This, this is the reality. This is who David is. He's not some, some stone. He's not, he's not a man without feelings. In fact, he's, he has deep feelings. He's a deeply feeling man you know that by his psalms you you know that by by what we've read about him look at this verses 16 18 uh and this is the difference you know david wants to run away he wants to fly but this this is the difference for david right here but i call out to god right there bang i don't run away I call out to God. I want to fly away, but I don't. Instead, I call out to God, and the Lord will rescue me. There's this declaration. At evening, morning, and midday, I complain and moan. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so, some of us are apologizing for complaining and moaning, but David says, uh-uh, look, no, I call out. I'm calling out to God, and I'm calling out to my reality. I'm calling out with moaning. I'm calling out with complaints. I don't like this situation I'm in right now. I don't like this. <laughs> Yahweh, I don't like this. I don't like being here. At evening, morning, and midday, I complain and moan so that God will hear my voice. He saves me, unharmed from my struggle, though there are many who are out to get me. He saves me, unharmed from my struggle, from the lion's den, from that, that valley of the shadow of death, from, from the caves, from all these places. He saves me unharmed from my struggle. Verse 22, always the difference for David. Cast your burden on the Lord. He will support you. God will never let the righteous be shaken. David is saying there's no, no, there's no other place to turn. There's no, absolutely no other place to turn. Uh, yeah, so just take it and cast it on him. And complain, moan and complain, morning, <laughs> evening, and midday. Uh, but cast that burden on him. That's just amazing. Just amazing. I hope you're encouraged by this today. Um, I, I, I just hope you get that, that sense of drawing into him and what you need to do in this relationship. And uh, don't put it off. You know, seek the deeper places. Seek the intimacy. It takes time, people. There's a cost to it. Uh, there's a cost of time that's involved in it. 
Um, it, relationships are built with time. Um, yeah, so just think about that. You guys be blessed today. Be encouraged. Thanks for being part of this with me today. And I look forward to spending the time with you again tomorrow. God bless.